Alex, how are you? What? How are we doing? Are you okay? Are you guys still awake? Right at the back as well? Okay, all right. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Tamina Kaosji. I am a journalist, an actor, an activist, and it's my pleasure to be here today. Today we're going to take a look at unveiling and exploring the prevalence of everyday sexism and misogyny. And we're going to be looking at not just actionable solutions, but a complete shift in mindsets. So get ready to have your head put on the other way around. And even if you're not, just let in your ears. It'll only take about 15, 20 minutes. All right. So why is it that we want to talk about this today? Now, patriarchy exists to the detriment of not just women, but also men. And feminism is basically only seeking for equal opportunity for women and all other marginalized communities in the group, in the world, sorry. Now, that makes up at least half of the world's population. So, feminism is obviously the overriding cause of our times. I'm here today to share why we should all be feminists. So, earlier this month, 8th of March, it was International Women's Day, there was a lot of feel-good stuff happening, lots of hashtags, lots of events, feel-good stuff. And this is something that we can all get behind, right? It's good to stand up for women, but it generally only happens, you know, one day of the year. Maybe you'll see a couple of other events throughout the next weeks. So, let's move on into the meat and the bones. Violence Against Women and Girls, or VAWG. The lived reality of the daily, the 24-7, the 365, is quite different for women. Yeah, sobering statistics, right? So even the squeaky image of K-pop has recently come under the whole Mocha, Spy Cam. This is Korea's version of the Me Too movement. Um, and did you also know that 43% of all rapes in the world, or attempted rapes, happen to women and girls under 18? Now, the standard reaction to such stuff, aside from the statistics, is that, ah, you know, men who perpetuate such violence are horrible, they're animals, society is in decay, the world is in, you know, a moral conundrum, it's the end of days. But, what if I told you that male violence against women and girls is not something which is actually to be expected, but it is actually not incidental, it is not opportunistic, it is inevitable. And it is a result of the way society is actually structured. So this brings us to the fact that the personal is political. Now, when I say the personal is political, let's talk about how many countries we have in the world. 195 countries in the world, and globally only six of these actually assure equal rights for women as they do for men in the arenas of education, work, marriage, parental rights, uh, career, sexual agency, healthcare, pension. So that's literally every stage of life, all the way from birth to death. So the structural oppression of patriarchy impacts not just women, but also men by wholly shaping the way we live, communicate, work, and even experience discrimination, illness, violence, and death. So, speaking about violence, a stark example of how violence affects all of us on a daily basis. Let's move to this week's biggest story, as you've been seeing on the slide behind me in the background. Christchurch mosque shootings, 50 Muslims were killed, amongst them one Malaysian teen, as well as three other Malaysians greatly injured, including his father. The shooter was a 28-year-old white male supremacist, but moving even deeper is the disquieting truth that five other um, shootings which happened in places of worship around the U.S. were also committed by white male supremacists. The United States of America also sees on average eight, uh, one shooting every eight days in the school system. One shooting every eight days in the school system. And insofar, back from the 1970s to 2019, there has never been a female shooter. It is all young men. So the common link between mass murder is male violence, but it's no wonder that it continues to happen. Society rewards male violence 
with status, toxic masculinity with power, and accepts masculine rage with fear instead of outrage. So when we move into this, we move a little closer to home. Um, I'm talking about the recent case of the harrowing video footage of a woman being assaulted in an MRT station elevator here by a young man. So what were all the reactions? A uh, woman should not go out so early in the morning. Maybe you should have a male accompany you to keep you safe when you're going out that early in the morning. But why is our reaction never? Men should stop being violent, right? Doesn't that suck? So we see this male violence daily though. Um, politicians like American President Donald Trump, he's always shooting off his mouth. So is uh, more closer to our regional arena, President Rodrigo Duterte, uh, spouting hate speech, hate postings, hate tweets, which degrade women, belittle men they disagree with, and further fuel men towards being comfortable with expressing rage through violence. So this, is at the top level. These are our politicians. A lot of them have this vitriol coming out through them. But what if we move into, okay, happier stuff? Hmm. Is this happier stuff though? But on the less grim side of things, when we look at the movies we watch, the video games we play, the ads which subliminally become a part of our conscience as we go through our daily lives. So we're basically constantly being bombarded with words, with images, with videos and speech. And this is, um, and this is also happening, which encourage uh, sexualizing of women, encouraging gender stereotypes, and ingraining limiting gender roles. So where do we go from here? Now a company um, that creates blades for men, Gillette, known globally, right? Some of you may have watched the Gillette ad. Gillette recently stepped up and they came under so much fire for an ad that basically just showcased men being better, men choosing compassion over violence, men expressing human emotions over explosive rage. And the reaction, there you have it up there. Well, it was just mind blowing because men on the internet and by large, they hated being told not to be violent and ironically reacted with hate speech. Uh, and even what you have here is just showing that when you are able to bring up the conversation, it's not always met with happy, happy and acceptance. This is a tough fight. So that's the broader nutshell to bring us up to speed with just the latest global as well as local conversations which are surrounding sexism. Now, moving into even deeper, one level deeper. Let's have a look at specifics. Now, sexism falls into two broad categories. You've got interpersonal sexism and institutional sexism. Now, both can also be combated when we're aware of the situation. Interpersonal sexism or misogyny, it usually presents itself as the day-to-day. -day. You've got tone and language, you've got catcalling, you've got sexual harassment, and of course, in extreme cases, you also have sexual assault. So. Practically speaking, what can we do about it, you know, as average human beings, as students, as decent people? The next time you see a friend, male or female, but generally it would be a male because statistically these, this is what it shows. Uh, if you see a friend about to catcall, especially if you're male, call it out and shut it down. If you're in a WhatsApp group where uh, friends are sharing pornography, sexist comments on pictures of girls, call it out. Shut it down. You are young enough at this very pivotal point in your lives that you're able to express your opinions in a lot more freer manner. People who may be just even a decade older, they have so many social norms that they're boxed in by that they feel embarrassed to speak up, even if they disagree with it. So now is the time to start taking charge of that conversation. Even phrases in our daily conversation like ballsy, who wears the pants, crazy cat lady, rule of thumb. All of these actually have deep-seated gender bias behind them. So be aware and instead of perpetuating the cycle of stereotypes, stop using them. Simple, baby steps, right? Now, women even get charged more for basic necessities like sanitary napkins, tampons, all the way to women actually even pay more at the laundry to get 
a shirt or a blouse um, longer than iron than men do. Um, you get charged more for car and repair services, all the way to fashion. Okay, this dress has pockets, but traditionally speaking, okay, how many of you ladies in the crowd, you've got your, everybody's got their handphones with them, right? Guys as well, right? Try putting it into your pants pocket. Now, try it, all of you. Guys, can you fit your smartphone into your jean pocket? What did I hear? Yeah, ladies? Ooh, <laughs> I wonder why that is. Well, actually, there is a historical um, backstory to that. Traditionally speaking, women did actually have large pockets on their you know, Victorian style dresses and those big skirts. What happened was women started to become politically active, going out on the streets, hiding pamphlets, snacks, little weapons, or while they were going out for demonstrations, the patriarchy frowned upon this, which is why, over the generations, something that seems like, oh, uh, just a slight aberration, is actually the distilled result of decades of sexism. Interesting, right? Such a little thing. So just think about how sexism impacts us in the broader scope of life. So, moving in from there, yes, to institutional sexism. Now, the biggest thing that we can actually talk about is the impact of sexism and where it becomes damning on a daily basis. So this is where our individual and collective action truly matters. First things first, the gender pay gap, yep, you know, the lady and the man both standing on top of the coins, the ladies is a little bit lower, but in actual physical terms, let me tell you what this means. The latest um, gender pay gap, which is coming from the World Bank survey figures, tells us gender pay gap costs the world 160 trillion US dollars a year. And this is simply because women are paid a little bit less than men all around the world. And did you know that there's only one company in all of Malaysia that actually pays women and men equally? Now, you guys must be thinking, so what does this have to do with me? Well, you're going to be part of the job market soon. So how do you join the conversation? How do you become a part of actuating change? Simple. What you can do is, when you're going out for interviews, seek to work with companies who you know have a good track record of treating women as well as men fairly with regards to pay, with regards to leave, and yeah, this may be sometime in the future, but even with regards to paternity and maternity leave. It makes a difference. Um, when you're going in to interview with HR, bring up the issue. Do you pay women and men equally in this company? Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to ask. This affects not just women, but also men. CEOs on average earn hundreds of thousands of dollars more than the employees doing the actual work. Always, everywhere. So, from the workplace to equitable opportunity over lifetime. Child marriage, now this is of course a screen grab from the recent uh, Women's March rally. Of course, there were lots of women and also men speaking up against child marriage. It's been a constant issue in the Malaysian news, right? I'm sure we've all seen the hashtags, girls not brides, and child marriage, students not brides, but child marriage is also a global crisis. Okay, you want numbers? I'm gonna read them off. 12 million girls each year get married before the age of 18. Roughly 33,000 every day or one every two seconds. That's another girl who got married somewhere in the world in that brief pause I gave you. So globally, there are some 650 million women alive today who were at one time child brides. Women who are trapped in a cycle of poverty, economic disempowerment, and health risks from early as well as multiple pregnancies. Malaysia has yet to ban child marriage, that much is true. But you can join the conversation online, especially on Twitter, Instagram, social media, where there are a lot of members of parliament, politicians, um, public figures, and activists who could really use your support to ensure 
that child marriage is banned in the future, in the near future in Malaysia, so that we can actually assure hundreds of our Malaysian girls of a better, brighter future. Now, I could stand here and continue giving you a long roll call of thousands more examples of institutional and everyday sexism. But ultimately, it all back, goes back to the first point I made. The personal is political. I'll let you just ponder over that image for a little while. So, this is most evident in the arena of political power and sexism. Now, Malaysia had a 14 general election back in May 2018. Roughly 51% of Malaysian women of voting age came out to vote. We had a change in government. Beautiful, wonderful. But we still have yet to achieve even 30% of women in cabinet or parliament. Let's move to the global stage. 90% of the world's presidents and prime ministers are men. So this means that from the 195 countries globally that make up our world, only 11 women are serving as head of state, only 10 are serving as head of government. Look at the state of our world today. Mass shootings, war, racism, violence against women and girls, environmental pollution, climate change, the whole shebang of humanity travails, right? Even Malaysia's lack of political will to end child marriage. We didn't get here on the backs of women. We got here on the coattails of generations of male leaders operating along patriarchy, systemic and structural oppression of empathy, collaborative development, and holistic well-being. The only way to really, truly effect change my friends, also because most of you are going to be voting age come next general election, the only way for change, vote for women, support women in power, support male politicians in power who support women and women leaders, and make sure you demand accountability and sustainability from all these leaders, whether they are women or men. Reversing the impending catastrophes of mass wildlife extinction, climate change, public health and national security crisis of anti-vaxxers to ensuring we all live in a world where social justice for all living beings, for all women and men is a reality which has never been closer than it is right now. But first, we must reset and rewind. Remember, feminism is not just pink slogan tees and hashtags. Feminism is not an academic or an ideological perspective. It is simply the ability for us as a collective species to finally realize our potential. Feminism is breaking the cycle that has trapped us into a loop for thousands of years. Lots of progress, yes, but still so much destruction, so much devastation, so much daily violence. And for what? Ladies and gentlemen, feminism is the collective action of both women and men bringing change that turns the whole world into a sanctuary for sustainability, progress, and compassion. Can you think of any better, bigger life goal than that? Neither can I. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'm Tamina Kausji, and I hope you're going to think about this and bring it into action in your daily lives.